Um, hello and welcome to our talk. Today we'll, we will be discussing um, our textbook, Ingresos, a Multiliteracies Approach to Business Spanish. My name is Anne Hoffman Gonzalez and my colleague is Michael Arnold. And as mentioned, uh, we both teach in the Department of Spanish and Portuguese Studies at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. So why did we create Ingresos? Um, prior to using this textbook, we used Saldo a Favor, um, which is now out of print for those of you who are familiar with the text. Um, when it became untenable to continue using that text, we started looking at ways to reduce costs for our students in addition to merely um, adding new, uh, having something new, right? Um, our library runs a grant program to encourage faculty to create open educational resources. And when we won such a grant, we decided to take this chance uh, not only to decrease textbook costs, but also increase alignment with our standard fourth semester course. Our language program in general is undergoing a transition to a multiliteracies approach to language education. And for those unfamiliar with language or with multiliteracies, a few of the foundational concepts are one, culture from the beginning and language to the end. So our language program is working really hard to bring more weighty cultural topics into even our first semester Spanish courses. And we are also working to increase um, the amount of Spanish language instruction in um, our upper division courses as well. The second tenant of multiliteracies is the focus on text. And in this approach, any structured communication is considered a text. So therefore in ingresos, we have traditional written texts, but we also have um, audiovisual materials, um, both video and song, and we have visual, me me um, visual media such as um, ads or traditional fine art. And all of these are considered text because they are organized to uh, communicate information. And so this multiliteracies is the uh, underlying approach we used in the creation of our textbook. And since a uh, fourth semester Spanish course requires a good deal of focus on grammar structures, vocabulary and such, we decided we would need to hone our focus both with respect to business themes and geography. We chose Spain as the geographic focus and our thematic structure is broken down into three very broad but essential business categories, economic sectors, marketing, and finance. Everything in this book is broken down into its most simple, straightforward, elemental form and exemplified with engaging cultural products and topics relevant to a college student age group and above. So what is in a unit of ingresos? So every unit has a theme and the three themes as mentioned that we used were economic sectors, marketing via Sara and fast fashion, and then finance via Mondragon, the world's largest co-op. Um, within each unit we have readings and grammar is presented in a contextualized manner uh, via naturally occurring examples in authentic texts. And, we, um, and these authentic texts can include the music, the art, the visuals, um, any of those count. It doesn't have to be a written text. And we support the naturally occurring, um, we support the naturally occurring grammar with explanation um, and activities. And we also have uh, cultural products presented in every unit. Um, and very often, um, multiple chapters in a textbook are combined to make a unit, but we presented this as three units that could each be done, um, meaning you can do the whole textbook in one semester. So this is a list of the grammar topics that we cover in this textbook. And as you can see, these are topics that would be present in any sort of fourth semester Spanish language class, perhaps with the exception of the last topic we cover, which is large numbers. Uh, that one we added, since we're dealing with business, um, very often our our students had to talk about millions or billions or trillions and didn't know how. So we um, include some specific instruction on large numbers. Um, and we came up with a specific list of topics um, by taking a look at our existing fourth semester syllabus and pulling out the topics that are covered in that class. And we use the syllabus rather than the textbook that that class uses because most textbooks cover more grammar topics um, than a single semester course can cover, allowing programs to pick and choose. So again, we wanted to increase alignment with our standard class. So we pulled out the topics they actually cover. After having a list of these topics we wanted to cover, we created a list of business topics that we wanted to cover. And Michael will be discussing those topics shortly. 
Um, after choosing text that aligned with the topics, we started to comb the text looking for grammatical features. So there are some pretty complicated diagrams that we used trying to match uh, business topics and grammar topics. Um, but we built the grammar units around features present in our authentic texts. Um, as I mentioned, we do provide basic grammar practice activities in the online textbook, and we supplement that with additional activities on our course canvas site. Okay, so I will quickly review the subtopics of each unit now as a quick overview. In unit one, we begin with very basic economic sectors of the primary, secondary, and tertiary. So primary is the extractive sector, for example, mining, and farming, fishing. For us, it's viticulture. And the secondary uh, sector is transformative, which is uh, most commonly, and most common example would be manufacturing. We use uh, curing and fermentation in our unit. Uh, and that is jamon iberico is the curing, and that's a kind of really delicious ham that you can only get from Spain and where the pigs uh, feed for most of the latter half of their life on acorns. So it gets this really amazing nutty uh, flavor to the fat. Manchego cheese and Rioja wine. So in my opinion, the best wine in the world. And then the tertiary sector is the commercial um, sector. And for that, we look at the death of the local mom and pop shop as the big box stores take an increasingly bigger share of grocery and retail sales. And in unit two, we look at the fundamentals of marketing, beginning with market marketing utility, which is form, place, time, and possession. And we also look at the seven Ps, product, place, price, promotion, physical evidence, people, and processes. We use Inditex, which is best known for its Zada fast fashion clothing chain to highlight supply chain logistics, which is very important since shipping and storage make up 90% of marketing costs on average across all industries but far less uh, of a percentage for fast fashion given its logistic structuring. And to focus in on the advertising business with Zara's unique just-in-time and deliberate undersupply strategies of any given product to promote frequent store visits by dedicated clientele as well as passerby. Finally, for unit three, we study traditional corporate financing structures, stocks and bonds, and then contrast this more common entity with a far more exciting model, the employee-owned corporation. Lucky for us, Spain is home to Mondragon, the world's largest worker-owned co-op, and we juxtapose Karl Marx and Adam Smith along with the concept of economic democracy as a light theoretical framework before we jump into the what, why, how, when, et cetera, of Mondragon, which is just uh, a fascinating history of Franco era, communal struggle, solidarity, and success if you have time to look at this more in depth after the presentation. We finished that unit up looking at how the financial crisis hit Spain from 2008 on and how economic democracy via the worker-owned co-op proved to be one of the few humane and sustainable models in what was otherwise a corporate bloodbath. Um, as you can probably see, we start with fairly simple business concepts and build complexity. Um, and this was done on purpose to add challenges for the students as the semester goes on. Each unit has a cultural focus related to the business theme, and we draw from a variety of artistic genres and eras from flamenco, punk, and carnivalesque street performance to Picasso, Joan Miro, and the idea of art as advertising or advertising as art. And by focusing on a single country, Spain, we're able to ground the learning in authentic texts and give students a deeper understanding of Spanish culture and business language. In unit one, we look at cultural products related to the extractive sector. Uh, Joan Miro's The Farm is the visual component and Flamenco Mining Songs uh, is the audio um, mode. In Unit 2, we study how the Spanish transition to democracy following the death of Francisco Franco was marked by a celebration of the supposed freedom that underlies capitalist consumerism and compare that with the conspicuous consumption hangover that followed the decadent indulgence of the 1980s in Spain. And then in unit three, we examine how art can be a response to political and 
fiscal crisis. We look at Guernica as Picasso's visceral reaction to the horrors of the Spanish Civil War. And additionally, the bomb town uh, is in the same region as Mondragon, the co-op uh, that we highlight in this unit, itself a business model necessitated by the communal and economic destruction of Spain's fratricidal conflict. Our song is a street performance that critiques Spain's response to the economic meltdown of 2008. And in closing, as we previously mentioned, we chose to focus um, on a single country for this textbook. Um, the choice of Spain was largely influenced by the fact that both of us teach um, advanced business Spanish as well. And in that class, we do not talk about modern Spain at all. We focus exclusively on Latin America. So this class offered us a chance to address that blank spot. And additionally, we felt that intermediate textbooks often choose um, to give students a very brief overview of many places. And we feel that makes um, that exposes them to many places, but makes them a master of none. Um, so by focusing on a single country, we are attempting to give students a more complete picture of one specific place. And with that, uh, we were, are welcome to take uh, questions or comments. Thank you so much. And you have about four and a half minutes left for questions, just so you know. Thank you. I haven't seen any in the chat yet, so I'm sorry if you already mentioned this, but are, are these mostly business students that are taking the class or is it all different kinds of students? All different kinds of students. Some are business students. Um, some are, I would say we also get a fair number of students who are just looking for something different, um, who, who think that it could be interesting. Um, and that this level 1004 is required for um, most students at the U of M. So mm -hmm. it, the model actually worked pretty well to attract people because it only meets two days a week, whereas other uh, 1004 equivalent meets every day. And so students mm -hmm. were attracted to that. Right. But it, it does, it does you know, bring in a broad variety of students, not like, mm -hmm. yeah, all our business. That's great. Um, I think there's some coming in on the chat. Yeah, someone asked, do you think you could create the same thing for other countries? I think we could easily <laughs> for, I mean, countries of interest, like I'm sure Anne could do Argentina since she yeah. has very, you know, close connection there, but. Right, and I think you could, if you wanted to create a similar text, but didn't like the Spain focus of this particular text, um, you could pick any country. Um, we had some specific reasons for choosing Spain, but it could work for any country. But since we, it is so specifically focused, so like the, um, the economic sectors chapter could go for, um, would be really, really easy to reproduce for anywhere. Marketing, again, countries, there's marketing all over the place, but you would definitely have to pick something different since fast fashion, Sada is one of the pioneers of that method, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you could do, there's other things that could be done in marketing. And finally, um, again, the co-op was very culturally Spain. specific. <laughs> it was perfect and, for a lot of reasons. Right, those, and yeah. other countries, but finance is present everywhere. Yeah, yeah, you just have to take a different angle with everything, basically. Exactly. Although the extractive sector, like Ann said, I mean, that's, every country has its own, you know. Mm -hmm agriculture mm -hmm. but, you know that would be fun uh, there are some other questions so do we work with the designs of meaning construct from multi-literacies we try to um so as we have built this course and as we have taught it this switch to a multi-literacies focus was ongoing so i think we are constantly looking back and asking how can we pull in more of um what we see in in the multi-literacies, can we, oh, for example, we look at political cartoons, right? So can we take those political cartoons and then ask students to create their own political cartoons? Um, that would be one example. Or um, for those of you who are familiar with Spain, we look at El Toro Osborne, 
the big, you've probably seen pictures of it, the big bull as roadside advertising that is now considered art in Spain. Um, and asking students to look at that in their own um, in their own communities, right? So is there anything comparable in their own communities? Uh, there, we missed the first question. Was this, this oh, book was before that? written? Yeah, this book was written by us. I mean, we take a lot of text from online and link mm -hmm. to that. So, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, we Anne and I did everything. Mm -hmm. Um. Yes, we do have one other themed course for fourth semester Spanish. We don't teach it, but our department does offer a medical Spanish course. Um, and there might be more. And then let's see, heritage language learners. I think it could be very interesting. So we don't have a ton of heritage language learners in this class, but I think interacting with um, texts that were created by and for native speakers, I think it could be, um, I think it could be very engaging for a student with a higher level who needs to be in a fourth semester class. And Anne teaches some heritage link, well, higher level heritage language. So whoever asked that question is interested in exploring it more, I'm sure she could meet up and talk. Mm -hmm. I'll volunteer you in. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, yes, and thank you for the person who shared the link to the book. So there are still some things as we were going back through it, it's like, oh, there's still a few things we need to um, keep tweaking, but that's one of the things we enjoy about this um, format. We can keep working on our book and constantly making it better. <laughs>